happened. And then he started talking about um, a family friend who had recently died who he didn't know had died. And then his mother and father came into the room and they said, where are you, where are you? And he said, I'm in heaven. Strange, unexplainable moments people have as they are close to death. What are they? And are they even real? Well, in this evening's Buckley Report, Bob talks to a journalist who's looked into this phenomenon and a doctor who has studied it for more than 20 years to see what's behind deathbed visions, moments when people who are dying see things no one else can. And without so much as lurking up, a where do you begin Nancy, to tell the story die. of I the end? Why? She says because he's seen his deceased for Dr. Mother. Chris I Kerr. Said, I don't remember that class from medical school. It she starts says, with a TED Simon, talk and a story from his youth. On August 6, 1974, I was 12 years old and I was standing over the bed of my dying father. His father had a vision which Kerr didn't think much of until he worked in hospice as a physician later in life and saw many more of them and realized they weren't medicinally induced hallucinations nor what's sometimes referred to as brain fog. Do you think you would have been as open to this concept if you hadn't experienced it with your father on his deathbed? Well, it's a good question. I, I think I was avoidant of the topic of dying um, uh, because of that. Not Phoebe Zerwick. Did this story resonate as much as any you've ever done? Oh my God. I mean, I've never, yes. <laughs> She's a journalist who was intrigued when she heard about Dr. Kerr's research into deathbed visions and wrote about it. Here's the magazine. For the New York Times Magazine. What did you think when you first heard his story? You know, I would say it resonated with me because I'd already had this experience with my mother who had multiple visions in the weeks and months leading up to her death. She called them her hallucinations. That's right. Is that what you sensed they were? I sensed that she was having a, an experience that was meaningful and profound for her. Dr. Kerr noticed that with his patients too. Unfortunately, when it comes to end of life experiences, most of the reports were based on anecdotal reporting. In other words, nobody had asked patients directly. Hardly scientific. You write in Dr. Kerr talks about the tension between these experiences and science's insistence on empirical evidence. Yes. Have we made headway in that? It's, yeah, that's an interesting question because I am, as a journalist and somebody who has tremendous respect for science, I'm on the side of evidence <laughs> and facts and but there's a whole part of um, human experience that, um, that I don't know that we can nail down with evidence. But Dr. Kerr is coming as close as he can. On top of his medical degree, Kerr has a PhD in neurobiology and has more than 1,400 interviews with people who had deathbed vision. These are almost always comforting moments for these people. Mostly, yeah, almost always. It was for Jean. My mom and dad were there. When I told my family that uh, I was happy about it, and that's what they asked. How does it make you feel? Well, I feel good about it. I thought it was a good dream. My Aunt Miriam came down to bring me up. Heaven. And it was comforting for Ginny, too, a little girl Dr. Kerr spoke to four months before she died. So these dreams, it's, it, do you, is it fun to go to sleep to think about what you're going to see? Yeah. Okay. Doesn't scare you then? No. Okay. Dr. Kerr says his science behind this work is solid. To participate in our studies, you had to be screened for clarity. A lot of the patients weren't on medicine. A lot of them had disease entities that didn't affect brain function at all. Um, they're completely unrelated. That doesn't mean he can explain what causes them, and for now, he's okay with that. I think you can get stuck there. And kind of where I end up is I just have reverence for it. I can't show you where love is, yet I know it exists. Um, this is somewhat uh, it, it, similar, and in the end, it. The fact that we can't explain it doesn't invalidate its importance to the person experiencing it. Bob Buckley. The fact that we don't have answers doesn't, um, doesn't diminish the reality. Fox 8 News.
Dr. Kerr says his research reveals that nearly three out of four people say they have visions of family members. Almost 58 uh, percent say that they, it's almost always ones who have already died. Many, almost 58 percent, have dreams about preparing for the afterlife. And a little more than a quarter of people say they have visions involving living people or other meaningful experiences.